All right. Okay. I think we should go ahead and get started then. So let me turn on record. All right. Well, good morning, everyone. I'm Kirilyn Osuyos with ElderWorks. And as most of you probably know us, you know, we're a 501c3 nonprofit organization. We help seniors and their families find home care, senior living, and a wide variety of other things, including this education. Um, today, I want to let everybody know we will be recording. Um, so Carrie can play this back. But I have the pleasure of introducing uh, Carrie Espinoza from Horizon Benefit Services. And she's going to be talking today about navigating Medicare during these COVID times. So with that, here's Carrie. Well, hi, everyone. And Carolyn, thank you for the introduction. My name is Carrie Espinosa, and I'm lovingly known as Medicare by many of my clients. Um, thank you to Jennifer, Carolyn, Emily, and the ElderWorks team for allowing me to present today. I've been in the insurance industry since 2003, and I'm honored to be an extension of the great care and service that ElderWorks provides to the community. And yes, in case you were wondering, I did start doing this when I was 12. That's how I started doing this in 2003. Today's presentation is an educational presentation that will help you understand Medicare enrollment periods, coverage options, and give you some information and tools to make an informed decision. Because this is an educational presentation, I am unable to talk about specific insurance companies and product, but I do promise to give you an overview of the landscape and your coverage options. So let me just introduce you. Oh, how do I get this? presentation to go to the next one. There we go. Let me just introduce you to my team and to my company. Um, Horizon Benefit Services was founded in the 1980s as a benefits brokerage, and I took the helm in 2013. We found that our clients wanted us to guide them and their employees as they transitioned into Medicare. So about 15 years ago, we expanded our portfolio to include Medicare insurance products. The Horizon team includes myself, Kristen Herrera and Vanessa Soberanis. Kristen and Vanessa are bilingual advisors. All three of us are independent insurance advisors representing multiple insurance companies and products across the Illinois and Wisconsin markets. It's important for you to know that when we help our clients enroll in coverage, we generally get paid by the insurance company. So it usually doesn't cost cost a consumer any more when we help you. Yeah. Our services are also available on a consultative basis though. So if you or someone you know needs help, just know that we welcome the opportunity to be of service. On behalf of my team, we wanna thank you for participating in today's session. We're gonna cover a lot of material and there will be time for questions and answers at the end of my presentation. So let's begin by explaining what Medicare is. Medicare is a federal health insurance program for those who are age 65 or older and certain young people with disabilities um, or with end-stage renal disease. If someone is collecting Social Security, they're automatically enrolled in Medicare. Otherwise, they need to actively engage the Medicare enrollment process. And it's super important to know that if you don't enroll timely, you can pay a penalty. That being said, sometimes enrollment can be delayed without a penalty, like when you're enrolled in employer coverage that's primary to Medicare. But everyone's situation is unique and there's no one size fits all rule to this. When you first enroll in Medicare and during certain times of the year, you get to choose how you get your Medicare coverage. And on this chart, you see the two ways. We have original Medicare and Medicare Advantage. Medicare Advantage is also known as Part C. I can't see anyone else on the screen. Hopefully they're not sleeping yet, Carolyn or Emily. I'm just teasing. So let's talk about Medicare, original Medicare, traditional Medicare, your Medicare Part A and B benefit. Think of your red, white, and blue card. Um, original Medicare includes Medicare Part A and Part B, and we're going to go into great detail on what, what's covered there in just a minute. 
If you want drug coverage, you can enroll in a separate prescription drug plan. And if you have original Medicare, you may want to add a Medicare supplement plan. For people who have access to employee benefits or retirement benefits through an active or former employer union, you want to decide what's going to be best for you and know that everyone's needs are unique and are based on your unique situation. So let's dive into Medicare Parts A and B. <clears throat> Medicare Part A is what covers inpatient hospital stays, skilled nursing facility coverage, home health care, and hospice care. Most people don't pay a premium for Medicare Part A because they earn it based on their working quarters. However, there are out-of-pocket costs you do pay when you receive care. And that's what this chart illustrates here. These are the costs that you pay for your Medicare Part A covered services in 2020. And Medicare Part A covered services means services that are medically necessary and are needed to diagnose or treat your medical condition. So you see Medicare has a deductible, Medicare Part A has a deductible of $1,408, which is a benefit period deductible. The dollar amounts illustrated in this chart are also updated yearly. So as you're looking at this, please keep in mind that these numbers will adjust in 2021. It's important to note that I said a very specific set of words. I said a benefit period deductible. That's important because you can have multiple benefit periods throughout a year. A benefit period is the way that original Medicare measures your use of hospital and skilled nursing services. A benefit period begins on the day you're admitted as an inpatient in a hospital or a skilled nursing facility, and it ends when you haven't received any inpatient hospital care or skilled care in a facility for 60 days in a row. So if you've left the hospital on a certain day and then are readmitted before 60 days from that date is up, you are still within the same benefit period. But if you go back into the hospital after that 60th day, you're then in a new benefit period. The difference between the two has an impact on your costs. And this is further complicated by the fact that any time spent in a skilled nursing facility where you may go for continuing care or rehab services after discharge from a hospital counts towards a benefit period but has slightly different rules and costs. Here's the thing, don't get overwhelmed by these numbers. The point in this slide is just to create an awareness and share an awareness that there are some pretty significant out-of-pocket costs with Medicare Part A, and it's important to consider getting additional coverage. Now let's talk about Medicare Part B. Medicare Part B is what covers outpatient services like doctor visits, lab work, outpatient hospital services, durable medical equipment, ambulances, et cetera. Medicare, has a, Medicare Part B has a premium, unlike Medicare Part A. The Medicare Part B premium is $144.60 a month. That's the standard premium, and higher income earners may experience what's called an IRMA surcharge. IRMA stands for Income Related Monthly Adjustment Amount. And let me just go back for a minute to Medicare Part A. While there's not a premium for Medicare Part A generally, um, you earn that based on your working quarters. Some people actually do pay a premium for Medicare Part A. So just keep that in mind too. So with Medicare Part B, there's a yearly deductible. Did everyone catch that? This is an annual deductible, not a benefit period deductible. So with original Medicare, once you pay the Medicare Part B deductible, then Medicare generally pays 80% and you pay 20%. Now, a big question that comes up with our clients is, hey, Carrie, am I going to have to pay that $198 in January? No, you pay as you go. So if your doctor's costs or your services received are less than $198, that's what you pay. But the most that you pay in 2020 is $198. And remember how I said previously that the numbers adjust every year? These numbers also adjust every year. So again, with Medicare Part B, after you pay the deductible, you pay coinsurance 20% for most covered services 
when providers accept Medicare assignment. Here's another important note. Assignment, Medicare assignment is an agreement by your provider, your doctor or supplier who's paid by Medicare to accept the payment or the amount that Medicare approves for the service and not to bill you for any more than the Medicare deductible and coinsurance. If Medicare assignment isn't accepted, but your provider does take Medicare, they can bill you 15% above the approved amount. This is called an excess charge. You'll notice the out-of-pocket costs or the exposure for consumers or Medicare beneficiaries are, is much greater with Medicare Part A than it is with Part B. But there's options to fill um, all of the gaps with original Medicare or most of the gaps with original Medicare. So let's talk about that. Let's talk about a Medicare supplement policy now. Medicare supplement policies are also called Medigap. A Medigap policy is one way to address some of the costs associated with original Medicare coverage. A Medigap policy is health insurance sold by a private health insurance company to fill the gaps with original Medicare. Remember how I said about your red, white, and blue card being your Medicare Part A and B? When you think of that card, think of it as a piece of Swiss cheese. And a Medicare supplement or Medigap policy is gonna fill the gaps in the cheese. Some Medicare, um, Medicare supplement or Medigap policies also cover certain, um, certain benefits that original Medicare doesn't cover, like Medicare, I'm sorry, like medical coverage if you travel outside of the US. With a Medicare supplement plan or Medigap plan, you can go to any doctor or hospital that takes Medicare. That's really important for people who snowbird. Coverage travels with you regardless of what state you're in. And with a Medicare supplement, you pay a monthly premium cost and have predictable out-of-pocket costs. In some states, so most states have their Medicare, Medigap, sorry, Medicare supplement, Medigap coverage standardized by a letter, letters A through N. But there's three states that kind of do their own thing. Those states are Massachusetts, Minnesota, and Wisconsin. I'm licensed in Illinois and Wisconsin, and I serve a lot of clients in Wisconsin. And they always say, hey, Carrie, I want to get a Medicare supplement plan G. And I say, well, we'll get you to that level of coverage. We're just going to go a little different route. So let's talk about the standardized Medigap plans. <clears throat> if you don't feel like you've had a bowl of alphabet soup yet, I promise you will with this slide. So because Medicare coverage is standardized, each letter represents a different level of coverage. For people who are new to Medicare, Supplement Plan G offers the most comprehensive level of coverage. If you're looking at this chart and thinking, no, Carrie, Medicare Supplement Plan F offers the most comprehensive level of coverage, you're right. But the Medicare rules change this year and people who are eligible for Medicare on or after January 1st of this year, 20, the best plan or the most comprehensive they can, plan they can purchase is a Medicare Supplement Plan G. Now that's being, it's important for you to know and all that being said, there's a lot of confusion with this. And if someone was eligible for Medicare before January 1st of this year, they can keep or still purchase a Medicare Supplement Plan F or a Medigap Plan F. There's, like I said, there's a lot of confusion and the reason for this change is it's, it was a legislative change. So the legislation behind that is the Medicare Access and CHIP Reauthorization Act of 2015, also known as MACRA. It was bipartisan legislation signed into law on April 16th of 2015, and it affects who's eligible to purchase a Medigap policy. And essentially after January 1st, 2020, you can't purchase a Medicare supplement or Medigap policy that covers the Part B deductible. For perspective, because I know everybody always wants perspective, a Medicare supplement plan G at age 65 will cost on average about $150. Some plans are less, some plans are more, and there are several factors that contribute toward the cost. There are also other lettered plans. You see those plans lettered A through N. 
each plan has a different price point. And if the more coverage you want, generally the more you pay a monthly premium. So know that when I gave you the $150 figure for the supplement plan G, I was just sharing some perspective and your actual rates may be different based on your situation. Also know that the rates are based on age, so rates increase with age. And there can be big differences on the premiums that different insurance companies charge for exactly the same coverage. So remember how in the prior slide I said that the Medicare supplement or Medigap plans are standardized by their letter. Think of it like saying, Carrie, I want a Medicare supplement plan G, the same as saying I want a can of Campbell's tomato soup. There's a lot of places you can go buy that soup, right? You can go to Mariano's, you can go to Costco, you can go to Jewel, you can go to the gas, right? It's the same coverage, but there's different factors that go into the rate. Costs depend on your age, they depend on the insurance company's experience. Um, sometimes, uh, you know, people who are on Medicare due to disability, they generally pay more. There's also plans or carriers that age rate their plan. Uh, different zip codes have different rates. So there's a lot of different variables. And some companies offer discounts. So for example, there might be a discount for having two people in the household with the same coverage or for paying yearly or monthly having it deducted from your, um, from your checking account. After age 65, if you're buying a Medicare supplement plan and you're not in your initial eligibility period, Medicare supplement plans use medical underwriting, which means in English that they review your medical history to decide whether to accept your application, maybe add a waiting period for a pre-existing condition, or they can apply a different premium when you aren't in an initial eligibility period or a guaranteed issue right, and we will talk about that also. It's also important to know that some carriers have what are called Medicare Select policies, and Medicare Select policies require you to use certain providers for elective procedures, generally certain hospitals for elective procedures. So otherwise they work just like the other standardized Medicare supplement plans, but the select plans do require uh, you use certain hospitals for elective procedures. So when's the best time to buy a Medigap policy? I alluded in the prior slide to the Medicare initial enrollment period. Your Medigap initial enrollment period begins the month you turn 65 or older and are enrolled in Medicare Part B for the first time. You also have to have Medicare Part A to have a Medigap policy. So just keep that in mind. The initial eligibility period is a six month period or six month window that gives you a guaranteed right to buy a Medigap policy without any medical questions. Once this period starts, it can't be delayed or repeated. And during your Medigap initial enrollment period, insurance companies must do the following. They have to sell you a Medigap, any Medigap policy they offer. They have to offer coverage starting on your effective date and even cover pre-existing condition. An insurance company can't make you wait or charge more because of past or present health problems. You may want to apply for a Medigap policy before your initial eligibility period starts because you don't want to have a gap in coverage. You want to have continuous coverage if you're coming off of an employer plan or other insurance coverage. Outside of your initial eligibility period, you can also buy a Medigap policy whenever a company agrees to sell you one. However, there can be restrictions like medical underwriting or a waiting period for pre-existing conditions. And again, medical underwriting is a process by which the insurance company uses your health status to figure out if you qualify for coverage at what price and with any exclusions or limits. So let's talk about those situations um, that are guaranteed issue. This is different than the initial eligibility period that we just talked about. Some people qualify for guaranteed issue rights, which are federal protections that you have that essentially require an insurance company to sell you or offer you a Medigap policy. In many cases, you have a guaranteed issue right when you have other health coverage that changes in some way, like when you lose or drop the other health coverage, like employer coverage. 
In other cases, you also have a trial right to try a Medicare Advantage plan and still buy a Medigap policy if you change your mind, usually within the first 12 months of that Medigap, I'm sorry, in the first 12 months of the Medicare Advantage coverage. Some states have additional protection. So here's the steps to buying a Medigap policy. Decide what benefits you want, then decide which standardized Medigap policies are gonna best meet your needs. Figure out which insurance companies sell those and compare your options. Now, when you compare your options, you wanna consider things like, what's the monthly premium? How many people do they insure? Is there a household discount? When I look at Medigap policies for my clients, I look at market analytics and we're not just looking at price, but we're looking at value. So that's what we encourage our clients to do and what I encourage you to do today. And then when you're ready, you go ahead and you buy the Medigap policy. And you might recall from one of our earlier slides that with uh, Medicare, original Medicare A and B, you can get supplemental coverage or Medigap coverage and you also wanna consider Medicare prescription drug coverage. Truth be told, this is the most complicated product and there's many variables that go into the plan that's gonna work best for you. It's really important that you analyze your options and make an informed decision. Here's some things to know about Medicare prescription drug plans. First, there's a penalty if someone doesn't enroll on time. And many counties have 20 plus Medicare drug plans. The plans vary by state and by county and prices can range from about $15 a month to more than $100 a month in some cases. Here's a key to be aware of is that the formularies vary across companies. And what that translates to is your prescription can be a tier one with one company and a tier two with another, or a tier two and a tier three. It may not be on one plan's formulary, but maybe on other plans formularies. So it's really important that you use either an independent advisor or a SHIP counselor or even Medicare.gov to really assess your options before selecting a Medicare drug plan. It's also important to know that Medicare drug plans have different coverage stages. Those coverage stages include the deductible, the initial coverage level, the donut hole, and catastrophic coverage. And for 2021, know that there's changes, big changes coming uh, with consumer protections on the cost of insulin. I don't know that every plan is absolutely going to participate. We're still uh, getting our, our footing for the 2021 insurance landscape or that every insulin will be covered, but it's something to be aware of if you're, if you're currently using insulin as one of your medications. So now let's talk about the other Medicare option. Remember how we talked about you have options to get your Medicare coverage. The other option is Medicare Advantage. And a Medicare Advantage plan is also known as Medicare Part C. With a Medicare Advantage plan, you still pay your Medicare Part B premium. It's really important to know that. Medicare Advantage plans are offered by Medicare approved private insurance companies that must follow rules set forth by Medicare. If you join an Advantage plan, you'll still have Medicare, but you'll get your Medicare A and B coverage from the Advantage plan, not original Medicare. In most cases, you'll need to use healthcare providers who participate in the plan's network. Some plans offer out-of-network coverage. If you choose a Medicare Advantage plan, your plan will give you a card to use when you get your healthcare services and supplies. Your Medicare Advantage plan ID is listed on your card and is your main card for Medicare. However, you may also be asked to show your Medicare card. So don't get rid of your red, white, and blue card. You should carry that too. Only give your Medicare number or other insurance information to doctors, pharmacists, and other healthcare providers, your insurers, or people you trust to work with Medicare on your behalf. And know that Medicare is never gonna call you and ask for your Medicare ID. Sometimes our clients reach out to us with that question and that just quite honestly, it doesn't happen. So here's how Medicare Advantage plans work. Each plan has a specific service area in which an enrollee must live. You or someone who's active 
acting on your behalf can request to see if an item or service will be covered by the plan in advance. In advance, excuse me, sometimes you must do this for the service to be covered. This is called an organization determination or pre-authorization. And if you run, it, run into this, you would contact your plan for more information because every plan has different rules and different, different standards for pre-authorization. Each Medicare Advantage plan can charge different out-of-pocket costs and have different rules for how you get services, like whether you need a referral to see a specialist or if you have to go to doctors, facilities, or use suppliers that belong to the plan's network for non-emergency or non-urgent care. And know that these rules can change every year. Medicare Advantage plans can't charge more than original Medicare for certain services like chemotherapy, dialysis, or skilled nursing facility care. And Medicare Advantage plans have a yearly limit on your out-of-pocket costs for medical services. These can be especially attractive because they generally have little to no premium and they can include additional benefits like vision, dental, hearing, and transportation. Those are just some, there's a, of course more. There are different types of Medicare Advantage plans including HMOs, PPOs, private fee-for-service plans, special needs plans, et cetera. This is another level of the alphabet soup. <clears throat> so just to go over what these mean for a minute, with an HMO plan, you generally must get your care and services from providers in the plan's network, except in emergencies. And in most cases, you need a referral to see a specialist. You may be able to go out of network for certain services, um, usually for a higher cost. Those are on the HMO POS plans. PPO plans stand for Preferred Provider Organization, and these plans um, may have a network, but you can also use out-of-network providers for covered services at higher costs. You're always covered for an emergency and urgent care. With a PPO plan, you don't need a referral to see a specialist. There's also private fee-for-service plans, which you can see any Medicare-approved provider that accepts the plan's payment terms and conditions but you need to ask a provider before they treat you so that you know if, they are, if they'll take the PFFS plan. Generally with these plans, you also don't need a referral to see a specialist. And then there's these special needs plans that provide benefits and services to people with specific situations like chronic illnesses or people who are dual eligible for Medicare and Medicaid. Lastly, there's Medicare or Medical Savings Account Plans, MSA plans. And these plans combine a high deductible health plan with a bank account that the plan selects. The plan deposits money into the account, usually less than a deductible. And you can use the money to pay for your out-of-pocket services during the year. MSA plans don't offer drug coverage. So if you wanna move forward with this sort of option, please consider also getting a Medicare prescription drug plan. Your out-of-pocket costs on Medicare Advantage plans can vary greatly depending on the plan. Um, it also depends on whether or not the plan charges the monthly premium. The monthly premium, again, is the amount that you would pay in addition to your Medicare Part B premium. And I just emphasize that a lot because it's a common question and common confusion. So sometimes with Medicare Advantage plans, you may pay more depending on your income from two years ago, and that has to do with that IRMA surcharge again. High income earners do get the surcharge, and the income thresholds are available online, or if you want to reach out to us, we're happy to share our Medicare 101 guide with that information in it. Whether the plan pays, there's also factors. Some plans um, actually have what's called a buyback, where they pay part of your Medicare Part B premium. Not all plans do, but it's an option with some plans. And then other cost factors are whether a plan has a yearly deductible or any additional deductibles for certain services. Some other factors that go into the cost are how much you pay for visits, office visits, or service, services. Are there co-payments or co-insurance and how much are they? For example, a plan may charge a co-payment like $10 or $20 every time you see a doctor. Generally, with Medicare Advantage plans, the big out-of-pocket costs are on hospital inpatient services and on skilled nursing facility services. So just kind of be aware of that. So who can enroll in a Medicare Advantage plan? 
To be eligible, you must be enrolled in Medicare Parts A and B. You also must live in the plan service area. You must be a U.S. citizen or lawfully present in the U.S. and you can't be incarcerated. In most cases, you can't enroll in a Medicare Advantage plan if you have end-stage renal disease. However, this restriction is ending next year for 2021. So to join a Medicare Advantage plan, you must also agree to provide the necessary information to the plan, like your Medicare number, your date of birth, so that they can validate your eligibility with CMS or with Medicare. You can join a Medicare Advantage plan when you first become eligible during that general, or I'm sorry, during your initial en enrollment period that we talked about, like with the supplements. Only if you remember with the Medicare supplement plan, it was the month you turned 65 and six months after. With the Medicare Advantage plan, it's different. It's a month you turned 65, three months before and three months after. And there's also this thing called a Medicare open enrollment period. So this is different than the initial eligibility period and it's also different than the annual enrollment period. The Medicare Advantage open enrollment period is, occurs January 1st to March 31st each year and allows you a one-time opportunity to make a change to a different Medicare Advantage plan affect the first of the following month. So if you're new to Medicare and you enrolled in a Medicare Advantage plan during the first three months of your initial eligibility period, you have that Medicare Advantage open enrollment period that occurs the first part of the following year. Now let's talk about when you can enroll in a Medicare Advantage plan. Another opportunity, I should say, to enroll in a Medicare Advantage plan, and that's during the annual enrollment period or AEP. And this occurs from October 15th to December 7th of each year with coverage starting the first of the following year. Cool. If you have a Part A and you enroll in Medicare Part B during your general enrollment period, then you can enroll in a Medicare Advantage plan from April 1st to June 30th with coverage starting July 1st. And general, a general enrollment period occurs when you didn't enroll in Medicare when you were first eligible. Somehow you missed the deadline. So in that case, you have a limited enrollment period in the first part of the year where you can enroll in Medicare and add additional coverage starting July 1st. But with the Medicare Advantage plan, if that's what you're adding, you must do it before, um, before the July 1st effective date. And then you have a special enrollment period when certain events happen in your life like losing other coverage, moving, things like that. So let's talk about the steps to enroll in the Medicare Advantage plan. Um, step one is find out what insurance companies sell Medicare Advantage plans in your county. Decide what benefits you want and decide what plans are available that include those benefits. So um, we talked about some of the ancillary benefits like the dental, the vision, the hearing, the transportation. Those are the benefits you'd want to consider in the plan. You also want to consider is your doctor currently in network or are you willing to switch doctors? And then some other factors, some other factors to consider are the monthly premium, the benefits, what's your maximum out of pocket? Is the plan an HMO or a PPO? Here's the big one, folks. Does it cross state lines? So I live in um, Winthrop Harbor, my office is in Waukegan. And a lot of my clients and uh, my friends treat in the Advocate Aurora system. And there's sometimes challenges with being able to see an Advocate Aurora doctor in Illinois, but crossing over to Aurora Hospital in Wisconsin. So you wanna be really aware of whether or not your plan will cross state lines so you don't get surprises later. And then the other factor is, how does the plan cover your medications? What medications are you on and how, does, how do they fit in that plan's formulary? So once you figure all that out, then you just go ahead and send in your enrollment application and CMS validates your eligibility and your coverage is issued. So let's talk for a minute about the differences between Medigap and Medicare Advantage plans, because this was a lot to cover, right? So looking at some very common, um, common features. Medicare supplement plans and Medicare Advantage plans are both offered by private health insurance companies. 
the oversight, government oversight for Medicare supplement plans is state, but they also have to follow federal laws. For Medicare Advantage plans, they're approved and managed by Medicare, by the federal government, by CMS. Medicare supplement plans supplement or fill the gaps with original Medicare, whereas Medicare Advantage plans have a private health insurance company administering or providing your Medicare benefits. So what do they cover? Medicare supplement or Medigap plans? Fill the gaps with original Medicare. Remember that Swiss cheese analogy I gave to you? Think of it like that. You're filling the gaps in your original Medicare coverage. And Medicare, with Medicare Advantage plans, they have to cover all of Medicare Part A and B covered services and supplies. And they may also cover things not covered by original Medicare like vision and dental. And most Medicare Advantage plans include prescription drug coverage. If they don't, please be very intentional about selecting that plan because you don't want to get a penalty for not having Medicare drug plan, Medicare drug coverage later. In both cases, you have to have Medicare parts A and B. And is there a premium? With a Medicare supplement, absolutely. You're going to pay a monthly premium. You're going to pay the Medicare part B premium. And you're going to have very little to no out-of-pocket costs depending on the plan you select. With a Medicare Advantage plan, in many cases, there is a monthly premium, but not in all cases. Some plans are offered at zero premium, and you pay as you go. But don't forget, you have to pay that Medicare Part B premium. And the thing to remember with Medicare Advantage is knowing your maximum out of pocket and your network. So Medicare has some great guides that they've put out for consumers. One is choosing a Medigap policy. The other is understanding Medicare Advantage plans. When our clients come in to meet with us, they usually bring these and I ask them how far they got through and they say the first page and they weren't interested. So I get to decipher for them what the differences are and help them make an informed decision. But know that these tools are there to help you. So now let's talk about Medicaid. <clears throat> Medicaid can also work with Medicare. So that's why we're talking about that here. Medicaid is, it's two different um, qualifying uh, events, whether you're under 65 or you're 65 and older, I should say on Medicare or not on Medicare. So we're going to talk about how Medicaid works with Medicare. Medicaid, by the way, is a needs-based public assistance program with strict, elig strict eligibility criteria, meaning you must live in the state. There's also financial criteria. And it's important to know that there's different levels of Medicaid, ranging from the Federal Extra Help Program, which is also called LIS. Um, the Extra Help Program, or LIS, helps cover just prescription drug coverage only, to uh, the PACE programs, to full dual eligibles, Medicare, Medicaid. I did mention the PACE program because I wasn't sure if anybody outside of the Illinois or Wisconsin markets would be watching this, but it's important to know that there's 135 PACE programs that offer, operate in 31 states. But Illinois, well, I should say Illinois is not one of the states, Wisconsin is. With Medicaid, it's funded by the federal government, but administered by the states, and they have latitude in implementing policy guidelines. So although there's very many variations amongst the states, the basic eligibility rule is that an individual may not possess liquid assets in excess of $2,000 or $3,000 for couples. Illinois does have a, a higher uh, resource threshold. And Medicaid, but for, so everyone's aware, Medicaid generally doesn't kick in um, until liquid assets are spent down. So if you have um, you know, $10,000 in an account or something like that, you have to spend down those and meet the income threshold in order to qualify. Um, there's also, with, with, uh, with Medicaid, it's often viewed as a payer of last resort. So I have folks who have Medicare and Medicaid who also take a Medicare Advantage plan. Um, in that case, the Medicare Advantage plan pays primary, Medicaid pays secondary. And the reason why people do that, just to kind of share some perspective, is with Medicaid, the dental, the vision, it's all very limited. Um, and the Medicare Advantage plans provide additional benefits. It's also important to know that Medicaid does cover facility-based care. So 
Um, sometimes if somebody needs long-term care, just so everyone's aware, Medicare isn't designed to cover long-term care, it's designed to cover rehabilitative care, so meaning you're in a position of getting better. Um, but if you're in a custodial care, long-term care situation where you need help with your activities of daily living, and uh, you know, there's, there's different ways to fund that. Some people have long-term care insurance, which we can absolutely help with. Some people self-insure or spend on assets and go on Medicaid, but you do have to spend on the liquid assets before qualifying for Medicaid. And it's also important to know that there's a Medicaid look back period. So someone can't immediately qualify for Medicaid by transferring your gifting assets to someone else, such as a child or um, a friend, because there's that five back five year look back period for eligibility. And um, even if you're selling a house too, right, there's, there's different situations around that. You should have an estate planning attorney or real estate agent. People kind of help guide you through this, um, through this process so you understand what you're doing. And the last thing to know about Medicaid is there's this thing called Medicaid estate recovery. So state Medicaid programs must recover certain Medicaid benefits that are paid on your behalf if you're a Medicaid enrollee. Uh, this generally applies to people who are age 55 or older, and the state is recovered to is required to seek recovery of payments from someone's estate for nursing facility services, home and community-based services, and related hospital and prescription drug services. Um, states do have the option to recover payments for all other Medicaid services provided to individuals. Um, so it's just one of those things like you don't want to not be aware of this. We've had situations where, um, you know, our clients thought they were going to be leaving their their house and, you know, their, their car to a loved one when they passed away. And then their loved one found out that mom or dad was on Medicaid and the state came back to recover their, recover their, uh, their investment. So uh, lots behind the scenes. There's a lot more to know about this stuff. So I'm just hitting on the tip of the iceberg. So let's talk about now Medicare and COVID. And just to share that we're almost wrapped up, um, Medicare and COVID. So this has been a crazy year, right? And my seniors, everybody feels disproportionately at risk. When, uh, you know, when things shut down and COVID was, was a reality for us and for our clients, we called our clients to check in on them and just make sure they were doing okay. And there's great concern and rightfully so. I do want to share just a funny story as we close out on this um, before we get into the, the some of the more COVID specifics. But my um, my grandparents raised me, and my grandmother's still with me. She lives a block away. She's adorable. Uh, if you ever meet her, you'll love her. Everybody loves Nancy. But my we we had my grandmother just being you know being responsible and not going out to the grocery store and not taking unnecessary risk for, uh, you know, for, for quite a while there. We've, we've since, she's since been going to the grocery store with a mask and in a responsible way, but it was a Sunday morning and we were about two months into COVID and grandma calls me and she says, Carrie, I want to have a talk with you. And she's got that stern, that sternness in her voice that I don't care how old you are when your parents sound like that, it makes you shudder. And I was like, what grandma, what's wrong? What do you, what do you need? And she says, Will I go to jail if I go to the grocery store? And there was there was a little part of me that wanted to tell her yes, but I said, no, Grandma, it's not it's not a law that you can't go to the grocery store, but you should, you need to wear a face mask and just be responsible about it. So that brings us to some responsible decisions that you can make. You know, as you're you know interacting with people, going out in public, I'm probably preaching to the choir. Wash your hands practice your social distancing, assume that anyone you come into contact with could have COVID. And you don't wanna think like that, but that's the reality. When we meet with our clients in office, they'll wear a mask, I'll wear a mask. You know, it's all about making them comfortable. Um, I met with somebody uh, in their setting last week and there was actually a plexiglass, uh, plexiglass wall in between us. So just know that it's, it's about being safe, more safe than sorry. So a couple of things that COVID has done to Medicare, though, that's really important to know is as a result of the COVID pandemic, Medicare has temporarily expanded its coverage of telehealth services. 
And what that means is you have access to a range of providers like doctors, nurse practitioners, clinical psychologists, licensed clinical social workers, physical therapists, et cetera, um, virtually. And virtually means by phone or by Zoom. There's all different ways that you can interact with your providers virtually. Um, and know that as I'm telling you this, I understand that it's not right for everybody. I have clients who don't know how to use that sort of technology and they're not happy and it's very scary for them. And they're still going um, you know, in, patient, in an office for their patient visits. Uh, but know that for people who are comfortable with technology, those virtual meetings can be a great blessing. It's also important to know that Medicare covers the lab tests for COVID-19, meaning you pay no out-of-pocket costs. It also covers medically necessary hospitalizations and treatment, but the out-of-pocket costs can vary and are based on the type of plan you have. So, um, you know, this is just a really stressful time for everyone. And knowing that those virtual visits are there, if you're feeling lonely, if you're feeling overwhelmed, please reach out to a professional. Um, sometimes we just need someone to help redirect our stress and anxiety and get us grounded. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. So in closing, on behalf of my team, Vanessa, Kristen, and myself, we want to say thank you so much. Um, the annual open enrollment period is coming up October 15th to December 7th, and we've, you know, we've been ahead of this with our clients. We've sent out communications. We'll be having some virtual meetings to let them know what, what our process is for the Medicare open enrollment period this year. Um, if you currently have an insurance advisor, reach out to them and ask them how they're going to help you compare your options. During the annual enrollment period, you're going to want to look at your Medicare drug plan and your Medicare Advantage plan, if that's what you have. Or if you're interested in a Medicare Advantage plan and enrolling for the first time, that's when you would do it. Just for the record, Medicare supplement plans, like we said earlier, you can change those anytime, um, but you might have to answer medical questions. So don't feel like the Medicare supplement plans have to be done during the enrollment period. So we thank you so much for your time today. Um, Carolyn, Emily, Jennifer, my Elder Works friend, thank you so much for the opportunity to present and we'll open it up for questions and answers. Thank you, Carrie. That was very informative and it is alphabet soup. And we do have several questions. I think the first one that came in was from Pam. She wanted to know regarding the yearly cost adjustments, is that per calendar year or when someone joins? So that's a really great question. The out-of-pocket costs, with Medicare, those A and B deductibles, co-payments and co-insurance are calendar year adjustments. And they're usually at the 11th hour, Pam. So if you're looking for that now, just sit tight. It'll come, it's just gonna take a while. And the Medicare supplement plan will keep up with those cost adjustments. <clears throat> so if you have a plan that covers your Medicare Part A deductible or your um, Part B, I'm sorry, Part A skilled nursing facility, co-payment, it will keep up with those. What you'll want to pay attention to is any out-of-pocket costs you have. And Medicare Advantage plans, those change on a calendar year basis as well. Okay. All right, Shelly wants to know about Medicaid. Does Medicaid, like Medigap, get accepted by all doctors who accept Medicare? Really good question, Shelly. Um, no, Medicaid, not all providers always take Medicaid. So that's something that you wanna check with. And I think I alluded to the fact that there's so many different levels of Medicaid eligibility. What we find is some people keep um, what we call straight Medicaid, and I'm gonna do straight like this, Medicaid. Um, some people have what are called Medicare, Medicaid, um, alignment initiative plans, MMAI plans, where the benefits are managed by an insurance company. So you should always check with your provider so that you're not surprised on the, on the back end of, right. of getting a claim. All right, and we also have a question regarding Medigap policies. Do they go up every year? Yeah, so Medigap policies typically go up every year in premium, and that's generally for a couple reasons. One is you get a year older. The other reason is the insurance company's claims experience. So it determines how much it goes up, right? So did the insurance company take in 
more in premiums than they pay out in claims? Or did, you know, did they not have a good run? Did they pay out more in claims than they had anticipated? Um, I will just kind of share real quick a, another personal story. So uh, my grandmother is in her 80s and she's had the same Medicare supplement plan for many years. Last year, I said, hey, Graham, I want to take a look at this for you. And it was great timing. She had just got a $50 increase on her premium. And we were able to save, you know, get her into another plan. She passed the medical questions and saved the premium. So if you've had a Medicare supplement plan for some time, it doesn't hurt to look. Know that every insurance company asks a different subset of questions. So just work, you know, figure out what those questions are or work with a professional so that you aren't wasting your time applying to a company to get denied. Wonderful. All right, I have a question from Colette. <clears throat> if I have MA, you listed hospice care is covered, but by the original Medicare, I thought if I have MA, I do not have original Medicare. So you're right on both of those. If you have a Medicare Advantage plan, the hospice benefit is covered by original Medicare, but with a Medicare Advantage plan, it's typically that's the only, that's really the only benefit that's covered by original medic. Well, there's a couple other. So, but know that a Medicare Advantage plan is not the same as original Medicare, but the hospice benefits are covered under original Medicare. I know this is all very confusing. That's why I have a job. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and Dan wants to know for Medigap policy, you suggest getting a few estimates for premiums. This is not readily available info. How do you get these estimates? So actually it is. Um, when I'm sitting down with someone, I have a program that I can use that'll give us multiple carriers, all of their rates for a plan G. I know they should have this for consumers and I'm sorry that they don't. Um, the closest thing that they have to, well, actually they do. So if you look in, the, I think it's um, Medicare and you or one of the Medigap guides, they do have the price information in the back, but don't just look at the monthly premium. Um, when, I, when I'm looking at this with my clients, we're looking at market analytics as well. So I wanna know like what's their market share, how many people do they have insured, uh, what's their, their rate trend, right? Their increased trend. And the reason why I wanna know how many people they have insured is there's a lot of plans that are available for um, people in Illinois. And I don't wanna recommend a plan necessarily that only has 200 people currently enrolled because if the big, you know, couple of big claims come in, everybody's rates are gonna go up a bunch. Mm -hmm. So yeah, but you're absolutely welcome to reach out to me. I'm happy to be a resource and to help you with that information, yeah. Wonderful. Okay, now we're back to Medicaid again. And I think, again, these words get confused, Medicaid and Medicare. So the question is, do all Medicaid supplements require spend down if over 2,000 in liquid assets to qualify? So that's a really good question too. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna answer it as clearly as I can, knowing that your situation, whoever's asking may have a unique situation, but sometimes people qualify for Medicaid on a, as a spend down, which means they have to pay a certain amount of money every month or every, you know, every couple months, they have, I think a three month window to, to submit um, expenses and then meet the spend down in order for the next month to be covered by Medicaid. Um, it, and there's different levels of spend down. So let me just say that it's really based on your unique situation. So okay. that helps. Right. All right, so now we're gonna go back to the earlier question as a follow-on about the Medigap policy and the estimates. And Dan's um, still looking for the specifics. So do you have the cost info that's not available to the general public? Yep, yeah, I do. I mean, I'm not, I can't share it here. Right, 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 no but way I understand. And, and you're making um, both, uh, your visits can also be like telemedicine virtual. Is that right, Carrie, or? Yeah, yeah, so, so the way that we're meeting with our clients is really based on their level of comfort. Some of our uh, clients wanna have virtual meetings. Some of them wanna have phone meetings where we email information and make a phone call. And I have people coming in the office. We've had people come in the office through open enrollment. I get that insurance is complicated. 
and trying to know who to trust to get information from, sometimes it's going to look someone in the eye. So when people want to come in, you know, we're absolutely welcome to meet with them in person as well. Okay. All right, uh, group, do we have any more questions? Um, I, I'm seeing some comments about it being a great presentation and appreciation and thank you to Carrie. It's my pleasure. Thank you guys. Thank you for oh. your attention. Mm -hmm. All right, I did get one more last question. Do you work with clients currently on Medicaid who are turning 65 and applying for Medicare and trying to decide what to do about Medicare, not disabled Medicaid. I do. So yeah, we have a really diverse um, group of clients. And you know, part of my heart has always been to be a resource to the community and the community at large. Um, so we do have folks who, uh, you know, who are on Medicaid and Medicare, and uh, we can definitely provide some information and guidance to help. Great. All right, is that it? And I believe it is. So again, this was a, an event sponsored by ElderWorks with uh, the cooperation and support of Horizon Benefit Services. Um, as I mentioned earlier, we do provide quite a number of referrals and carry somebody that we call on when somebody's questioning about their rate increases. Um, we love that Carrie has the flexibility to represent a, a whole variety of different uh, companies and specialty products. So thank you for your time. Um, you will be getting a six question survey. And of course, uh, your feedback helps us to plan for future events. Thank you. All right, everyone.